So momentarily we will be joined by the head coach of the Wichita State Shockers, Greg Marshall, and a few of the players on his roster. Uh, with this win tonight, 70-50 to 50 over Vanderbilt, the Shockers will now head to Providence. They will play the sixth-seeded Arizona Wildcats on Thursday in Providence. Uh, also for post-game locker room procedures, the locker rooms are open to media after the cooling off period is finished. Uh, essentially for the home team, sorry, for the winning team, that's 10 minutes after the game is over effectively. And for the losing team, it's open to media effectively 15 minutes after the game has ended. So for all intents and purposes, by the time uh, we dismiss our student athletes from the winning team, both locker rooms are then open uh, to media access at that point. That's about 15 minutes after the game's over. We're now being joined by the head coach of the Wichita State Shockers, Greg Marshall, as well as student athletes Fred Van Vliet and Ron Baker. Uh, we'll start with an opening statement from Coach Marshall, then we will open the floor to questions for Fred and Ron only, then we will dismiss them and open the floor for questions for uh, Coach Marshall. Greg? Well, very pleased with our second half in particular. I thought it was a, a very even 30-30 uh, uh, tie, uh, self-explanatory, but I thought um, we didn't play well. They, they didn't play well. You know, it was back and forth in the first half. But the second half, we, we kept defending them. Uh, we did a wonderful job all game long with our defensive field goal percentage. And ultimately, we got the lid to come off the basket for a few threes. So we made seven threes in the first half. We made none in the first, and that's the difference. That's the discrepancy. Questions for Fred and Ron only here on the left first. Yeah, uh, Ron, that, there's a stretch in the second half. You guys were able to extend the lead a little bit while you and Fred were kind of alternating rest time. How important was that stretch with some other guys stepping up and making some shots? It's always nice to see teammates step up and play their best. I think the reason for the run was we weren't fouling them, getting them to the free throw line, getting those easy uncontested shots and our big started contesting without fouling and we were able to get some stops in a row and, uh, Fred, and I, Fred and I hit a couple threes there to get things going. 
early on and the momentum started to shift slowly and we just kind of grasped it and uh, kept on rolling. You're in the front right. Austin Ward, ESPN. Uh, Fred, it was hard to tell uh, what happened on that play early that cut your eye, and then when you went to the bench, uh, I don't know, were you, been, were you more in pain or just annoyed that you had to sit out there? Yeah, definitely, uh, just frustrated. Um, wanted to be out there, it didn't hurt at all. I didn't even know it was bleeding until uh, Anton told me, so I tried to shut him up, so the ref didn't see it. The ref ended up seeing it, and you know, they, yeah, well, I couldn't feel it, so I was just trying to take the ball out so I get another play in. Um, got over there, I was just hoping that I didn't need stitches because that's just gonna take more time. And I also hate getting stitches. Uh, so, you know, we got the best trainer in the world, Ty Fagan, and he patched me up real quick and got me back out there. Yep, here in the right again. Um, obviously, you guys as the, the upperclassmen are, are you know, leading this team, but uh, they cut the lead to one, and you had a freshman and a sophomore hit big threes, Connor and Marcus. Uh, how big is that for you to have these young guys that can step up in big moments as you move through the tournament? Fred, can you answer that first, please? I mean, it just speaks volumes to our depth. Um, you know, we work so hard on the young guys, and for them to step up in those moments is huge for our team. Uh, this time of year, that's what you need. I mean, teams are too good to just have, you know, one or two guys carry the show all night. So it's going to take a total team effort. And those two guys made a couple big shots. Connor made two. Uh, Marcus made one. And Zach Brown made one also after struggling in the first half. So uh, huge, huge shots. And that gave us some momentum. And, you know, we were able to get stops and get some rhythm going. Ron? Yeah, I'm happy for those guys. Uh, they, they put a lot of time into their craft. and. They were able to knock down some shots, uh, and Fred did a good job creating uh, for his teammates like he always does. And ultimately, we want to feed off those shots that went in tonight and uh, continue to shoot the ball a little bit better. Uh, we've been struggling as of late, and uh, I think it's a good confidence builder uh, to move on to this next game. Here on the left. Fred, you got some three-pointers to go down early in the half. How much did that just energy, relief, just really help this team? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny how that works. Uh, I was telling the guys at halftime, um, all it takes is one, and it's contagious. So, you know, I ended up being the guy that hit the first one, I believe, and then Ron hit one, and, and we, we were able to get it going. And, uh, you know, it's a double-edged sword where it gets other guys going and it loosens the defense up and spaces them out a little bit more, too. Um, just by nature. So able to get a couple of shots to go down. Uh, you're going to have to make some threes, obviously, to win these ball games, and uh, we were able to do that. You're going to left follow up. Hey, Ron, Rono Nerger gave you a real lift off the bench. Uh, tell us about, about his performance tonight. Rono's been putting a lot of work in uh, in practice. Uh, he's been giving us good minutes, uh, good practice minutes. We really like uh, his aggressiveness at the rim. Uh, he does a good job of rim protecting, and he had some really big plays at the rim tonight, uh, especially when uh, their point guard drove in there late, and he just straight up and down made a good contest on the ball. And Those are the plays our five men are starting to have to make. As long as we can keep uh, their players off the foul line uh, early on in games, I think we have a pretty good chance if our, in our half-court defense. Got time for two more questions right here. Uh, Fred, Connor's been struggling a little bit with confidence this season. Uh, had a bad stretch in the second half. Came back in, made a very important shot, made another one. Just talk about his contribution. That's big time. I mean, that's what we expect Connor to do is make shots. And I think expectations were crazy on him early. He's been able to fight through that. and. Uh, I think I'm as hard on him as anybody, um, but it's out of love, and I just I just want him to be the best that he can be. So uh, we keep instilling confidence in him. I think he has it. You know, it's just about finding spots. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you got to be a little bit lucky too. And uh, he was able to, to get a nice uh, couple rainbow threes in that really, you know, stretched the game open. So got to give him a ton of credit, you know, for, for being pretty mentally tough through there, uh, through a tough stretch when he, he got scored on a couple times. and. He was able to bounce back and uh, forget about it, knock down some crucial threes. More questions? Got time for one more last one here, Laurel. 
Can I just get some thoughts on facing Arizona? It's a quick turnaround, another good offense that you guys will be facing. Fred, then Ron. Tough team, tough team. Uh, Arizona is one of the top, you know, programs in the country for a long time now. Uh, they're a really good team. We're able to catch some of the games this year. Um, they're always late with the West Coast times, but I know we've got a huge front line and a couple of young and really talented guards. So, uh, you know, we're, we're already shifting our minds towards that with a quick turnaround, catch a first flight out of here tonight and uh, head to Rhode Island, get some rest and try to game plan for Arizona tomorrow. Ron? I think the first thing that comes to mind is just the excitement. We're trying to have fun with each and every game in this tournament, and Arizona happens to be the next opponent. Uh, Fred and I had the opportunity to meet Tarzuski this summer in Colorado. Uh, wow, that guy's he's a good kid, high-character guy. Uh, Coach Miller does a good job with his program each and every year, and we're just excited to match up with him, and I know Coach is going to have us ready with film and uh, the process tomorrow, just preparing. And so we're, we're excited. Fred and Ron, thank you for your time. Good luck against Thanks. the Wildcats. Questions for uh, Coach Marshall here on the end. Kevin. Oh, you left. <laughs> Greg, uh, you mentioned yesterday that height is, is very overrated uh, as a stat. How were you guys able to neutralize and, and really outplay their bigs inside? Well, I don't remember saying it was overrated, um, but maybe I did. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I, think I, I think I said I'd like to have a little more height, but, um, you know, our, our guys just scratch and claw and fight and, 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 and really battle. Uh, we, uh, I learned from uh, one of my mentors, John Cress, at the College of Charleston, that you always have to have three guys that can defend the post, and tonight we went off with a fourth guy in the first half. Um, Anton Grady subbed in quickly for Shaq Morris, uh, did a great job, especially on the offensive end. Uh, then Rano Nerger played very well in the first half, and he got a couple of fouls, and we were able to put Bushwa Makota, our fourth defensive post player, in. Damian Jones is a very talented player. I've seen him, uh, you know, first round draft pick uh, some, by some publications as a, as a projection. But, you know, our guys just hung in there, and they, they fought every possession. And they, you know, I just ultimately, I think our, just the, the wave of fresh players and, and six, eight, six, nine guys going at him um, was, was a very effective. Here on the right. Uh, Greg, Connor had a stretch where he gave up a three pointer, a three point play, defensively got uh, taken advantage of a little bit. He went to the bench. I don't know that any of us thought he would reappear, but you put him back in and he made two of the biggest three-pointers of the game. Just talk about the decision to put him back into the game, if that's one of your hallmarks as a coach is to not have any memory of the bad stuff. Well, you know, we've, we've got X amount of guards. We're still down a guard, as you know, with, with Landry Shamit, who played three games, and he would be out there. He was in the rotation. He was a, maybe the third guard behind Ron and Fred. Uh, it would be very close with he and Connor right now. So we're, we're down a guard. Uh, you've got to play the guards that you have. And, and Zach Brown is our fourth guard, uh, along with then, G, you, then you get to J.R. Simon and Tyrone Taylor. So um, Connor, those guys needed a blow. Ron and Fred were playing so hard, and they were both exhausted. And they told me, you know, they were very honest with me, I need a blow. And Connor, uh, Foul the three-point shooter twice. Uh, that's the biggest thing that I was concerned about: playing defense and coming up with loose balls and and, and doing those type things. But I'm I'm going to ride with Connor Frankamp when the ball leaves his hand. I really feel like it's going to go in. Uh, you know, he talked to me uh, he, before we left that you know he's going to make some shots, which he didn't in St. Louis, but he's going to make some shots. And I said, finally, I just said, look, stop talking about it. Okay, I need you to do it. And um, he, he stepped up big. Zach Brown made a big one, too, as well as Marcus McDuffie. So those guys also contributed. Here in the front, on the right. Uh, Coach, how did you feel that your defensive activity on the perimeter, especially, uh, maybe disrupted Vanderbilt's offense? Well, I mean, let's see. They had 16 field goals. Um, Baldwin had three. And 
the chance had four. That's seven. Toy Toy made some threes. He hurt us in the first half. He really did. Played well. And but other than that, I thought we were really good. I thought our guards uh, neutralized them. Um, Baldwin is tremendous when he starts going downhill, and we were we were we, we were very diligent in not fouling him. Sometimes he gets in there and he just you know puts up a circus shot because he's looking for contact. So I thought we did a good job of not fouling him. One time Fred stripped him, another time a couple of our bigs altered his shot without fouling. So that was good, but he, he's a very talented player. Uh, and then Fisher, uh, Davis Fisher, um, Fisher Davis, I'm sorry, did not make any uh, three. So that was a, a, a real concern that we had because his, I mean, he's like Connor Frankamp at 6'5". He re when the ball comes out of his hand, it looks really good. So we were trying to stand on his toes and did a good job of that. Time for one more question. Last one here on the left. Uh, start making some threes early in the first half. How much of a relief was that just from giving them kind of a, an, an energy boost at that point? Well, I think, I think the game was very identical to the, the first half, but uh, like as I've said in my opening statement, but the, the difference is you make seven threes. We made none in the first half. We make seven in the second half. We win by 20. I mean, you, you got to knock down some shots in this game, and, and we haven't been doing that. But, um, you know, I still have faith in my guys. I have faith in my shooters. And ultimately, you know, our success or failure in Providence, Rhode Island now is going to be determined by us being able to knock down some shots. Because Arizona, I haven't seen them on film yet. I've been concentrating on Vanderbilt one game at a time. We have been doing some advanced scouting. But I assume they've got some pretty big guys too. Greg, thanks for your time. Thanks. Good luck against Arizona. We're now being joined by the head coach of the Vanderbilt Commodores, Kevin Stallings, as well as student athletes Joe Toy and Riley Lachance. Kevin, if you like, you can start with an opening statement. Okay. Uh, we congratulate uh, Wichita State. Um, it's a hard fought game, and, and um, I think that um, um, the story of, of the game, and I, I just heard some of Greg's comments, where they were able to make shots and, and, and we weren't. Um, we, you know, we shoot it poorly from. Uh, from two, we shoot it poorly from three, and we shoot it poorly from the foul line. Uh, generally, we're, we're a pretty good shooting team, and, and um, uh, these two guys made shots for us. I thought both of them played very, very well. I thought our bench was uh, a real bright spot for us tonight, and, um, uh, but we're, we're not going to uh, uh, we're not gonna win many games when, when um, we don't get a little more production from uh, from guys that we depend on and that have carried us all season long. So uh, we're very disappointed to lose, but um, uh, I'm proud of my team. I'm proud of their effort and um, uh, wish, wish the night could have gone a little bit better. We, we kind of had it where we, where we needed it. They, they made a spurt there at the start of the second half. Uh, we came out and just had three bad plays in a row and um, one, one bad on offense and then two bad on defense. And, and um, uh, and that gave them a spurt. And then we got back into the game. We're shooting a one-on-one, -on -one, missed that. Um, and then they made a little run, and, and, uh, uh, and that, was, that was the game. Questions for Riley and Joe only right now here in the aisle. Adam Sparks of Tennessee. And Riley, was there a sense as good of a shooting team as they are, and you guys are as well, that after that first half, eventually one of the two teams would shoot it well in the second half? There would be a hot streak one way or the other. Uh, yeah, we, we knew somebody was going to, um, you know, eventually make shots, and we were confident that it was, it was going to be us with the, uh, you know, the amount of shooters we have on our team, but uh, unfortunately it wasn't. Here in front on the left. Uh, for either Riley or Joe, I'm, I mean, you guys shot the ball all right, but for the most part, as Coach said, the team didn't. Did you think that was – uh, more about their defense or more about you guys just missing shots? Riley, can you answer that, please? Uh, you know, I, they're a very good defensive team, and, and they play really physical. And we did get some good looks, some open looks that, that didn't happen to fall. And 
Uh, I think it was a combination of both. You're on the end. Joe, what was uh, working for you? You came off in off the bench and you gave guys a little spark there in the first half. What was working for you? Uh, I just tried to give my team a little bit of energy. My shots were going in, so it was it was a good first half. We just didn't finish it out well. You're in the front. After you guys gave up that 11-0 run to start the second half, uh, you guys went on a 17-5 run. What started clicking for you guys? Joe. Uh, we were just really together as a team. Everybody was cheering each other on. So I think the energy from the bench and uh, everybody in the court just, we played well together uh, in that spurt and just couldn't finish it up. You're in the back. Joe, I know we're looking ahead a little bit, but you played really well these last two games. What, what did these last two games do for your confidence going into next season? Uh, it makes me feel good. I mean, I wish we had kept going and uh, had a better run, but I mean, it's nice to know that we have a lot of good players coming back, so I think we'll be fine next year. Any further questions for student athletes? All right, Joe and Riley, thank you for your time. Good uh, Congratulations on your season. We'll open the floor for questions for uh, Coach Stallings. Yeah, here on the right. Kevin, Kevin Goheen with uh, VandySports.com. What were they able to do effectively to, to really neutralize Damien and, and kind of the inside game you guys have? You know, I, I thought that we got the ball um, there some, and um, Damien got some pretty good shots that just didn't go in. You know, he started off by missing his first four free throws, and um, sometimes, uh, you know, he, he, he's a little too fragile because he wants, he wants to do well for everyone. He's such a nice kid. And, um, and I think the missing those first four free throws kind of, kind of bothered him. Um, and he might not agree to that, but, um, but anyway, I, he just, you know, um, we didn't get it to him enough. He didn't convert enough. Um, and if you can, if you can stop him, then then that that takes away a lot from what what we can do. And um, uh, we couldn't make the shots on the perimeter to to take the pressure off of him. And he wasn't making the shots inside to take the pressure off of the perimeter. In the front. Where specifically has Joe improved the last couple games that he's had such strong showings? Well, he's, he's just been very aggressive, and, and um, he's made shots. Um, matter of fact, right at the end of the half, uh, we ran a play, and, and we got exactly uh, a good pitch out to him, and, and he didn't shoot it. He ended up driving it, and we got a shot clock violation. And I'd, at halftime, I said, Joe, man, shoot that ball. You're making shots. Shoot that thing. And, um, um, but I, I was very impressed with, with Joe's improvement over the course of the season. And, and um, uh, he, he played himself until he was almost exhausted tonight. He, he didn't do as well in the second half, but he put so much energy and effort into playing um, that he was truly, truly physically very, very tired. And I, I was really proud of, uh, of Joe and, and his performance tonight and, and, as you mentioned, the progress he made at the end of the season. Right here in the aisle. Kevin, you, you alluded to some of the season lows in shooting, uh, shooting percentages. No starter scored in double figures. Is, is surprised the right word? That, that Yeah, surprised and disappointed. I mean, um, those guys didn't go out there. Um, you know, Jeff Roberson didn't want to go one for seven. He, he was trying his butt off. He played as hard as he could play. And um, um, I, I, feel, I feel badly for those guys. They're, you know, they're good shooters. They're, their statistics say that they are prove that they are and and tonight they didn't go in and you know again we got a we got a number of quality looks that 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 we didn't make and and um uh, one of the one of the bad things for our team this season has been when we don't make shots we tend to give in a little bit more on the defensive end we don't we don't combat that in the way that you need to in the way that we've tried to stress okay now you have to be even better on defense if you if you've come into a bad shooting night, now your defense has to win the game for you. And I thought we did, you know, we hung in there, we hung in there, we hung in there, 
And then that run that they made there about six or seven minutes going to game or five, somewhere right in there, just sort of broke our spirit a little bit. And, and, um, uh, and, and a lot of that was just from the fact that we weren't, we weren't scoring the ball. Uh, I encouraged my team all week long or since we've known who we were playing and told them this was not going to be an easy game from an offensive standpoint. Wichita State is very good defensively. And so that means we're going to have to be even better. And um, uh, at times, we were, we were really outstanding defensively. Um, but uh, all in all, we, we just couldn't get it going on the offensive end. Here in front. Uh, Coach, how would you assess the season overall? Um, you know, it had a lot of ups and downs. Um, we, we struggled to, uh, to find consistency. We struggled to find um, a consistent chemistry. Uh, amongst amongst our group, um, and um, uh, I, I thought there were some real bright spots. I, I thought that um, uh, some guys did very well. I thought some guys, you know, statistically had disappointing seasons. Um, and uh, but you know, even the guys that might have had disappointing seasons from a, dis a statistical standpoint. You know, their attitudes were great. They, they never wavered from being team first guys. And, and um, so uh, it, it, there, was, there, were, there were a lot of ups and downs. And, and um, um, we actually had a really good chemistry about us early in the season. Um, after Luke got hurt, we lost some of it. And, and I'm not sure that we ever totally re, recaptured um, that that together chemistry that that we really had, I thought, going for us well early in the season. Last question. I like to check behind him. Well, out. Darren might think his two tens are the best hand now. Four spades on the river. He's going to check again. Said cowboy. All in. All in. All in bet. Well, I am shocked at that bet. It's so much that Darren just might not want to call it. Darren still got four million left. Does he want to put it in here with two tens? I know he can beat a flush draw and a straight draw, but basically, that's all he can beat. And he knows this guy's very capable of bluffing on the river. Season ends um, with the expectations you guys had and all that. Do you expect to be back next year? Do you, is that your plan? Well, I, I don't. Um, I don't really control whether I'm whether I'm back. That that decision is not not made up that made by me. Um, I've been here for 17 years, so I, I don't know what else I would be doing. But um, um, we're um, we're proud to have been in the NCAA tournament. Uh, we got behind the eight ball a little bit during the season, and our guys fought hard and, and, and dug their way in and dug their way out. And, um, uh, and, and, and we had a pretty good finish. This, this, the way the last seven minutes of this game went wasn't, uh, wasn't to our liking, but um, it wasn't because our guys didn't play hard. They played hard. They competed hard, and um, I'm, I'm real proud of them. Kevin, thank, thank you. you.